Hello YouTube, in this new hypertrophy series, we're going to talk about small versus big muscles and how you should target them. So there are many philosophies, there are many methods surrounding these, but for me, it's very simple. Big muscles are going to have a much higher work capacity by default. Why? Because they have more muscle fiber. Smaller muscles are going to have less of that. And a lot of people misconstrue that as thinking that smaller muscles need less frequency and that the bigger muscles need more. But it's actually the other way around. You see, if you want to optimize your training, your frequency and the ability to damage the muscle fiber and move on quickly so that you accumulate as much damage as possible throughout years of training, you're going to do the exact opposite. You are going to be punishing the bigger muscle groups with a lot of intensity and volume, give them more time to recover, and hit the smaller muscle groups with more frequency and less volume. But you're going to do them more often. What is the logic behind that? Well, it's sort of the destiny of big muscles to move a lot of weight because they can, they have the, the ability to. So they're going to be the ones who are going to accumulate a ton of tonnage by default. It also means that they're going to be able to do so within the same session because a muscle's ability to go back to baseline is strictly correlated with its strength. A muscle that has the ability to move a thousand pounds is going to be able to still move massive amounts of tonnage deep within the workout. The same muscle, for example, might not be able to move the same amount. Percentage-wise, they might. The muscle that moved 1,000 pounds might be reduced to 600 pounds at the end of a three-hour workout. The one that can move only 100 pounds might be reduced to 60, right? But it's still a difference of tonnage that accounts in the hundreds. And that is a difference in the amount of volume that the muscle is going to take that is going to be directly correlated with the amount of time it's going to need to recover. So for example, this is why if you want to go hard on a squat, you're going to target the quads and the glutes. Those are pretty big muscle groups. Throw in the arm strings, another big muscle group. You're going to be able to move a lot of weight relative to your own strength. It should be one of the lifts where you're the stronger, where you move the most tonnage. You're going to have a propensity to want to go hard. Right? You're going to want to PR, you're going to want to do volume, really tire the legs, and that's great. That is actually something that I tell you that you should be doing. But then you should give your muscle uh, time to recover. You're not going to do the same thing again the next day, and that's good. Because squats can be mentally and physically taxing. I already discussed that in the series. So you're going to want to keep them fresh. You don't want to do them too often. And that's perfect because they require you to let them on the side for a while so that the big muscle groups that suffered big damage recover. That's one chunk of the program. Because right there, what we just described is strength work. It's strength work and it's heavy compound movement done in a relative intensity window that is going to be challenging, but uh, allow you to rep the weight. Now, small muscles come into play. How are you going to work the small muscles? Small muscles will not have the ability to get hammered during a workout. You're not going to be doing something like 12 sets for your rear delts. And if you are, you're most likely not using good weight. Because if you isolate a very small muscle group like the real delt, and you go hard with something like that is going to progressively overload, they are going to be toast for the session and even for the next day maybe. But you're going to find that because their ability to handle tonnage is so small, because they're so weak, they recover faster. It has little to do with their size in reality, but more what their size is going to create in terms of training need. Because they don't need so much, they don't need so much recovery, and they can be hit again very soon. There are sometimes even the next day. And that's the thing that I see some people uh, preaching the opposite of. Well, they say, oh, train your forearm only once every four days. What? No. Train them whenever you can. Because they are so small that the amount of damage that you're creating doesn't really amount to much in terms of hypertrophy. If you train them like you train big muscles, you're going to be very disappointed. You need to, of course, progressively overload everything, but you need to also pay attention to the scale of the muscle. So that's, to me, the distinction between the big and the small muscles. 
And you're going to find that within a program, this is perfect because it complements each other. You see, you really don't want to be supersetting heavy knee flexions or heavy hip hinges. They're going to tax your cardiovascular system a ton. They're going to be very demanding for your system. And therefore, you just want to be able to rest in between the sets. That's, that's strength work. But when it comes to isolation movements for small muscles, you should superset these all day, every day. It's not going to make you out of breath. It's not going to really damage your ability to use the other muscle groups because they don't really uh, work in unison like they would do in a compound movement. You are isolating every single portion. And that's going to allow you to have those giant sets that are going to be, in reality, taking just as much time as the strength work, but it's going to be done in a way where the tonnage is spread across the body with all the small muscle groups. And that's how you progress on them, in my opinion. A lot of people do compounds and they think they can just complement the muscles that don't get a lot of love with just a tiny bit. But they don't, they don't do it often enough because they often attribute the same frequency as they do their compound movements. Isolation stuff cannot be hit with the same frequency.